Hey you monsters. What's going on here? I didn't know he could bend over anymore. Yeah, I'm old and not totally decrepit. How was that raccoon I gave you for dinner last Friday? Oh, that was good. Yeah. Put it on rotisserie? No, it's dead. It's dead. <laughs> royal. This is day three of the pole barn edition. On day two, they only worked a half day. They got all the sides of the fill compacted and sloped down. And today, lumber's coming. Now, do you think these guys will be ready by next Friday? I think they will be. We target Memorial Day, which is a little over a week and a half. They're going to finish in time, I think. They're like, feed me! <laughs> hey, Ash, how the raccoon was. Uh. <laughs> I think our is the way to go. And what about our trap? We caught that coon the first night. And let's see, the morning after the second night, we came out and the trap was picked and tripped. And then the third night, the trap was rolled all the way over, probably 30 feet over that way. And of course, the liver was gone. And so yesterday, I staked the trap down and put a concrete block on it, and nothing touched it last night. Morning, bulls. You need more hay today. Howdy porkers, bossy pig, there you go, Billy boy, how are you buddy, how's it going, what are you little ones doing, stop climbing on my, we're getting them used to regular feed, another week or so and we're going to wean them off of her. And I think we're going to put Billy in with Brownie to breed her again. That'll be fun. Morning, cows. You're all just chilling out there. Tulip had her calf a couple days ago. We tagged it and castrated it yesterday. It was a bull calf. Nice looking calf. That makes two so far this season. What's on the docket this morning? Well, this is... Ugh. Tractor of the day is a 1940 Farmall H. Got to put the battery back in it. Took it out for the winter. Oh, looks like something was pooping in the box. Get out of there. I've forgotten if this fits without taking the box out. Yep. Ground cable. Yep. Been a good six months since this ran. We'll see. I don't know how much juice is in the battery. to have a relatively new wire from when I replaced the wires on the Super A which really I discovered weren't all that old. This H is about my favorite tractor. This is what I grew up with. My grandpa had one and it was had a wide front on it, not this one. I love driving it. Easy drive, easy clutch, easy steering. Enough power to do most jobs, rake hay, 
even bale hay with the small square. Just an all-around great tractor. Here's the holes. Ooh, concrete puck in the bottom of them as a foundation. Eight foot apart. There's just six posts here on the north wall. They're eight foot apart. And then they'll have more posts on that end wall that they'll uh, auger for later. But these are the bearing posts here that the trusses will sit on. Here's lumber, six by six posts for the wall and another lumber for framing in the beam and the end walls. Well, I turned around for a few minutes because one of my dad's friends came to gonna cut that scrap up and get it out of here that's behind the barn and look what happened. All the posts are set in the holes. He's coming in with a little old skid steer and a flatbed. And we're gonna drag some of this stuff out here and get rid of it. This is a New Holland 310 baler that I bought just for the thrower. The uh, chamber on it is shot, it rusted and heat, but we pulled the thrower off of it five, six years ago, it's sat here for spare parts ever since. Now it's gonna go down the road. I got a bunch of buckets that came, there's a trip bucket that came on the H and loader frame that came on the H and snow blade that came on the Super C. Bunch of old rollers. Cast iron cauldron we used to scald pigs with when I was a kid. That's staying. I wanna show you this old Gale skid loader. This was made between six, 62 and 65 early skid loader it's got a wisconsin four cool four cylinder air cooled engine in it controls and it's hydrostatic which is very early hydrostat. for hydrostat Well, the baler's gone. These are some old rollers. Pulling everything out there to load it up. And the posts are set. Back filling the holes. This turned out to be a good job to do today because I can do it bit by bit in between other things. Now I've taken to not replacing the gaskets here every time because they're separate from the filters now at Napa and the gaskets are usually a special order item. So if the old one is still in good shape, I reuse it. All it needs to do is not leak, that's all. New filter, cartridge installed. These old H's and M's have the coolest oil fill ever. I wonder how long this thing's been here. Yeah, didn't cut all the way through it, I don't think. Oh man, that's all root down there. Well, I missed the good part. Yank it right out, broke the root. There's one half of it out anyway. Now we're going to try for the second one. This was a car trailer here with two things. Yeah, half of it's still there. It's in there. 
It's gonna take the tree with it. Oh man. I like that tree. That was one of my favorites. No, nope, that's it. Blew the engine. Here we go again. Sands one tree. Problem is we're caught right over there. There. <laughs> He wants this in one piece because he's got another use for it. That's why we don't just cut it in half and yank it out. Look at there. Success. Putting up the lintel, header, whatever you want to call it. The reason I got this tractor out and I'm cleaning it up and getting it ready is because I got to mow in front of the chicken boxes. The grass is getting too tall. Every year we have to do a little clipping in front of them until it's time to make hay. This mower's got about 57 grease points on it, which is good. What a great workplace I have for <laughs> my locks. I gotta put this swather on because I'm gonna be going through thick grass and I'm gonna need to lay it over. Well, get off there. You know, I didn't ask you to be so complicated. You just decided you were gonna be today. You go here and then you go off. You go on to the here. Here we go, swather installed. Grass comes in and folds over, creating a clear spot for the next cut. But I'm not doing that today. It's getting kind of late and I gotta get the chores. I almost forgot, the bulls are hungry. You know, I'm kind of whipped. It's been a long day. I got one more thing to do. How come my truck leaves little poops all across my property on the screen? I don't think that's very nice. We gotta drive just out here to the grove. This is about where we left the cows in the morning. They were laying right there. I went to see my friendly neighborhood fur trail rep today. We got mineral for the cattle. What do we got here? Well, we got Redmond salt. I want to get garlic salt, but they didn't have any, and there hasn't been a lot of demand for it around here, so I'm not sure you're going to carry it anymore, and I'm not sure that it really did anything last year anyway when I fed it to the cattle. The other mineral I'm putting in is kelp. I'm a big fan of kelp. It's got lots of good stuff in it, and cattle eat it right up. Here's that pink kind of Redmond salt. Yep. Coco, I got a customer already. 
eat up, Mom? Well, check what's in there. Yeah, pretty good, isn't it? Yeah, makes you want to lick your nose. Here's a familiar scene <laughs> and an unfamiliar scene. I got lots of ventilation now. The contractor's gone for the evening, but this side is ready to set trusses on. He's got knee bracing to go on yet, which looks like he's got cut here. And then the trusses will bear on, on a ledger plate that goes up here. Trusses are coming tomorrow morning. And it occurs to me that we got into this whole thing and I never paused to explain exactly what we're doing or at least refresh your memory. This addition is 40 foot long this way and 20 foot wide this way, single span with inverted trusses. It's gonna have a door behind you, just a small door for the cattle to get into and out. And then this end's gonna be open and I'll just put some pipe gates on this end. And the idea is you come in here with the tractor out this end and clean out the winter pack. This is the winter shelter for our cows. It'll be enclosed with siding on this wall, except for that little door I talked about. This side will have the siding on it as well with the clear story, the translucent clear story like the existing barns got on it. And this side is completely open. What I'm doing here is this is the predominant winds in the winter time. This is the north coming from the north here and the west coming from the west here. So I'm sheltering cattle from those winds and give them a place to get in from them. And as you go around to the existing barn side, we're gonna have a continuous feeder panel like we've got now. Actually, we're gonna reuse the ones that are in the old barn that will run the whole length here. So we'll be feeding the cattle along this line and they'll be eaten all through here. And inside this big barn here, my plan, I hope it works out, is to get rid of all this stuff. Of course, I'm gonna to have to get rid of it here Get rid of all this stuff and have that be completely hay storage wall to wall and in the winter time just keep the hay loading tractor in here and the hay and i'll be able to get the hay and feed the hay to the cattle all inside i won't have to go outside at all power and water is going to run from right down there the water line comes through there it's going to run right up here into the corner of the barn right here so we'll have a stock tank water supply and electricity to keep the water thawed in the winter time if needed and on this side looking from the north at the barn addition you'll see here i have a heck of a slope coming in it's built up and i'm going to be bringing the tractor in through here to clean out bedding pack in the winter time so you got to have an apron out here that's horizontal to set your bucket to go in and take the manure out. So this slope, we're actually gonna build this flat out at least the length of the tractor and then come down so I can put the tractor up on here and load manure. And on this side, the north side here, we're gonna have to put in a new fence down at the toe of the slope here. And that fence will go straight back and meet at probably this corner of the pig barn and then the pig pasture is gonna be extended out into here. And after the barn addition is done, then we can start on the old barn and what we got planned for the pigs. And I've been thinking about that some more and I think I'm gonna to wait to bring you up to speed on that until we get the barn done and get into that part of the work. I hope you have a great day and I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time. Yep, big plans.